。现场的朋友，大家好，我很高兴能啊，呃，答应巴比呃巴比特的邀请，能啊参加现在的杭州呃区块链呃的呃技术的呃大会。我很、呃、对不起我呃。因为呀，疫情的问题不能啊，呃，现场参加。但是我希望啊，今天可以跟呢大家分享一些，呃，以太坊的最近的呃研究和技术的呃发展。So today I'm going to um talk about um what happens、uh, after the merge. Uh, so, we've、uh, talked a lot about、uh, many of the、uh, things that are happening to Ethereum over the next、um, half year or so.、Uh, so we had the Berlin hard fork,、uh, which、uh, happens in April.、Uh, then, up upcoming very soon, we have the Altair hard fork on the、uh, proof of stake chain, and the、uh, London hard fork、um, on the、uh, existing proof of work chain. And at some point, maybe about half a year from now, maybe more, we'll um we'll see um we'll get the merge, um which is when the yeah proof of work chain um finishes and everything on the yeah proof of work chain gets moved over onto the yeah proof of stake chain. But what we yeah can talk about more is what happens after. So what happens after the merge is finished? What are some、uh, Upgrades to the、yeah, Ethereum protocol that will、uh, happen、um, after that point.、Um, so, the first、um, major thing that will happen after the merge is、uh, what I call the、yeah, post-merge cleanup fork.、Um, so, the idea here is basically that the merge is.、Uh, Being done in this、uh, way that allows it to happen、uh, um, as quickly as possible, and so the merge is fairly minimalistic,、uh, and, and、uh, there's a lot of things that the hard fork、uh, that implements the merge、uh, does not do. So, for example, it does not enable、uh, withdrawals. Is、uh, one big one big example of this, right? So, right now, if you have a、yeah, deposit in the proof of stake system, you have no way of taking it out. And after the merge,、uh, you still have no way of taking it out. the The ability to take your deposit out、um, and、uh, withdraw the、uh, deposit and your rewards that's something that will be implemented in this、uh, first hard fork、um, that comes after the merge.、Um, aside from that,、um, some different uh, technical uh, changes uh, removing this mechanism called ETH one data voting, which is the mechanism that they.、Um, Proof of stake chain uses right now to talk to the proof of work chain,、um, changing the ex、um, execution layers, a serialization,、uh, potentially removing RLP in more places, adding SSZ,、um, potentially、um, agreeing that clients should stop trying to download the、uh, proof of work chain before the merge.、Uh, so simplify clients,、um, delete a lot of code that's not necessary anymore. Um, add some opcodes to access、uh, more information about the proof of stake change. So just a lot of small changes that could have come at the same time as the merge, but to make sure that the merge itself happens more quickly, we are delaying until this、uh, fork after the merge. So after this,、um, sharding is uh, one uh, next major uh, improvement. Uh, so this is a、uh, sharding for、um, data.、Uh, so The shards that we are adding, this、uh, 64 shards、um, that will each、um, have 512 kilobyte blocks that come once every 12 seconds、um, on each shard, and、um, these blocks just contain data, right? So there's no transaction execution、um, happening inside of shards. The purpose of these shards is to give more data space、uh, to allow rollups、uh, to. Um, use that space to have more scalability. So today,、um, rollups can scale up to about four thousand、uh, to five thousand、uh, transactions per second. If、um, hypothetically the entire Ethereum ecosystem were to switch to rollups, but with、uh, sh data shards, we have maybe twenty to fifty times more space, and it would be possible for rollups to go up to a、um, hundred thousand transactions per second, and、uh, in the future, even more than that. Uh, so sharding will be added with a fairly basic level of security as first, and then more security will be added later, and more improvements to sharding will come、uh, over time.、Um, data availability sampling.
Um, this is this uh, technology that we uh, came up with and uh, developed to improve the security of uh, sharding. Um, basically to allow nodes to verify for themselves that the data in the shards has actually been published without uh, nodes needing to download um, all of that data themselves. Um, so if you just search for uh, the phrase data availability sampling, there's uh, a lot more information about this um, in various places on the internet. Um, in my opinion, it's a, yeah, a very fascinating technology and it's very important for just increasing the security of sharding, uh, making sure that the increased scaling and the increased amount of data um, being uh, passed through on a sharded network uh, does not lead to a risk um, that blocks get accepted where nobody can access the data uh, because that would break rollups and that would break applications. Um, so I'm um, just inc increasing the security of sharding more generally. Um, and there's also other uh, security improvements. Uh, so this is just various different cryptographic technologies that have fancy names like a single secret leader election, verifiable delay functions, proof of custody. Um, I don't have time to go into what all of these things are, uh, but uh, just very quickly, a single secret leader election, for example, it just makes it hard, harder to see what the who the proposers of future blocks are going to be. And that makes it more difficult to attack the network because you don't know like, which nodes you need to attack if you want to prevent uh, blocks from being published. Verifiable delay functions make randomness in Ethereum more secure. Uh, proof of custody forces nodes to actually keep validate block data. So proof of custody can um, increase decentralization um, and just reduces the risk that everyone uh, kind of starts uh, using centralized services to run all of their nodes. So also important. Um, some improvements to the execution layer. So this is uh, the part of the system that handles things like transactions, the EVM, smart contracts, accounts. Um, address extension is one thing that we are looking at, increasing addresses from 20 bytes to 32 bytes. Um, Virtual trees. Um, so this is to re make stateless clients possible. So a stateless client is a client that verifies the chain without actually having to store the state of the chain locally. So without having to store locally um, all of the accounts and all of the contracts. Instead, um, a stateless client would receive and verify a block that contains um, the information um, that is like this, the, the part of the state. So the only the accounts and the contracts that were accessed in that particular block, together with a proof that those accounts uh, the, that are being included in the block actually are valid and they are the correct um, state at that particular time. So also a very fascinating technology, and this would just allow block verification to happen without nodes requiring to have like really any hard drive space. Um, state expiry is um, another uh, solution to Ethereum's growing uh, state size problem, which basically just says clients stop needing to store um, accounts and other um, storage and other objects that have not been accessed recently. And instead, anyone trying to access those objects just needs witnesses. Uh, so they need to provide proofs to be able to recover them. Um, account abstraction. Uh, so this is um, a technology to uh, increase ease of use for smart contract wallets and for some other applications, um, and basically make it as easy to use uh, smart contract wallets as it is to use uh, regular accounts today. And this has use cases like multi-sig wallets, social recovery wallets, uh, many other use cases. There's different paths to doing this, and uh, we're exploring all of them, uh, but trying to actually get this uh, kind of finished and um, included in some form. EVM improvements. Um, so improve the Ethereum virtual machine to make it possible to add or implement more advanced forms of cryptography more efficiently, remove the need for pre-compiles so we can simplify the protocol. So a lot of, uh, Actually, not that many improvements, uh, hopefully, but a, a, a few, but very important uh, improvements to the EVM. So that is what is coming in the near term future, but we can also talk about what's happening in the yeah, long term future. So this is 
maybe two to five years from now, maybe if things take longer than um, even after that. Um, so there's a few things there. Um, so one is um, continuing to improve Ethereum's consensus algorithm. So we're looking at CBC Casper for this, and uh, we're also, uh, also looking at some other things, but basically just continuing to improve the uh, simplicity, efficiency, and the security of uh, Ethereum's consensus uh, protocol. Um, ZK Synarchs, so the, uh, or zero knowledge proofs. So this is this uh, very important and uh, very powerful technology. The um, idea behind the ZK Snarks is that they are um, proofs that prove that, for example, everything in a block was computed correctly, that all of the transactions are valid, that the entire block is valid, um, where that proof can be verified very quickly. So even if a block is very large and very complex and has a large amount of computation, the proof that that block is correct, um, it takes a long time to generate the proof, but once the proof is generated, the proof can be verified very quickly. Um, so Synarchs um, have a lot of use cases. Uh, so uh, we can Snark the uh, beacon chain, so Snark the proof of stake chain uh, to make the proof of stake chain easier to verify and participate in. We can Snark the uh, Ethereum virtual machine um, or uh, potentially uh, some other machine, virtual machine that extends the Ethereum virtual machine. Um, make it easier to add full smart contract capabilities to shards if we want to do that. So a lot of things that we can uh, add zero knowledge proofs around. And if we add zero knowledge proofs to things, then this will make it much easier to run an Ethereum node and for anyone to verify that Ethereum blocks actually are cor uh, correct. So it will make, make it even harder to um, attack the network. Um, Post quantum security. Uh, so this is uh, also something which is uh, very important. Uh, so with post-quantum security, um, basically uh, quantum computers are coming and uh, they'll be here at some point, not very soon, but definitely at some point in the future. And uh, being secure against quantum computers is definitely something which is uh, very important. Uh, so for uh, quantum security, um, there's a... a the good news is that there are solutions, right? There are changes that can be made to the protocol to make the protocol more secure against uh, quant uh, quantum computers. Um, so we can use cryptography that is known to already be quantum resistant. And the best uh, quantum resistant cryptography actually is hashes, right? So even today, hashes, so functions like SHA-256 and SHA-3 are already quantum resistant. And so what we can do is we can replace existing cryptography with hash-based cryptography. So we can replace SNARKs with uh, Starks. Uh, we can replace BLS signatures with aggregate signatures that use the same technology as Starks. Uh, we can replace the uh, Verkle tree that we talked about to make uh, proof sizes for stateless clients smaller with a yeah, Merkle tree that uses a Starks. Um, so we can basically replace everything with uh, Starks, potentially replace some things with lattices. The Ethereum Foundation has a uh, cryptography team that is uh, looking more and more at uh, lattice-based technology as well. Um, but these are things that only needs to happen like maybe five to 15 years in the future. So this is not a near-term concern, but for the time when this becomes a concern, we already know the kinds of changes that will need to be made. Um, so those are some of the long-term improvements. Um, so, and at that point, um, I think we'll basically be done, right? So I think uh, Ethereum's uh, general technical vision is um, that um, we're trying to improve quickly in uh, the short term and uh, settle down in the long term, right? Because blockchains in the long term, I think, do need to settle down and the new need do needs to become more stable and they do need to just give more guarantees to the users that things are not going to change um, so that users can feel safe uh, developing on them. Um, but in the short term, there's just all of this technology that has been developed after Bitcoin uh, came into existence and even after the original version of Ethereum came into existence. And this technology 
is just very powerful and it can really improve the yes, security of uh, Ethereum, the scalability of Ethereum, the privacy of Ethereum, all of these uh, properties. And uh, it's just really important to be able to add these things so that um, the blockchain can be secure so that we do not have these uh, very high transaction fees uh, so that the blockchain can be easier to use. And over time, the um, expectation is that more and once the blockchain itself has enough functionality, anything beyond that can be done at layer two. Right? So there's still room for improvement at layer one, but more things can be done at layer two. And layer one can focus on decentralization and eventually layer two will get people doing the most innovation. But we're not there yet, right? I think that is a place that we will be much closer to two years from now. Um, but right now there's still, um, after the merge, all of these other improvements to just improve the yeah, scalability of the yeah, Ethereum protocol and to make the Ethereum protocol e easier to use and to make the Ethereum protocol uh, more secure. Um, and those things are very important, right? But uh, the, these things are all happening in parallel, right? So there's already, there's teams working on proof of stake and working on the merge. There's a team working on sharding. There's a team working on account abstraction. There's a team working on verbal trees. So there's also many projects working on layer two scaling and continuing to improve scalability of Ethereum. Um, Optimism, uh, one of the layer two projects and um, recently launched support for Uniswap. So scaling is happening and it is happening more and uh, more quickly. And I think, um, over the next uh, two or three years, uh, I mean, we're going to see it become much uh, cheaper to use Ethereum. We're going to see it become more possible for many more kinds of applications to use Ethereum. And uh, the Ethereum ecosystem is going to uh, become a lot more uh, interesting and fun. Uh, so thank you.